Hi, I am Licia Taifa Brenesi, a member of the promoting committee of ANGI, the Italian National Association for Young Innovators. ANGI was created to foster innovation in new technologies. The main purpose of ANGI is that of giving a chance to young innovators, researchers, entrepreneurs, universities and institutions to meet, interact, build synergies and work on projects together. Innovation in all of its shapes. So. Good evening, we are here with Dr. Langer of MIT University um, in the United States. Uh, Dr. Langer is here for three days in Rome and we are having the privilege and honor of interviewing him as Angie. Well, I, what I saw actually this afternoon, I, I was at a place and I'm terrible at names, uh, but it was great. I mean, they had all this lab, sp I mean, office space and they had you know, all these companies getting started. I saw one on, you know, genetic predictions using artificial intelligence. I saw another one on, you know, new hair care. I mean, they were doing everything. And the young people there, they were all so excited. And that, that's really very analogous to the United States. It was also a lot of very open space. It was actually right next to the, uh, to, to the big train station, mm -hmm. you know, but all Happy. those things, yeah. So I, I thought it was uh, terrific. And, and, and you see that kind of spirit in the United States and here, I mean, which, and it's that spirit that drives innovation, I think. Well, I think there's a couple different things. One is, I think that ro robots are already here. I mean, there are companies that have been started out of MIT, like iRobot and other ones. I think artificial intelligence is a little bit different in the sense that I think there's an awful lot of things that can be understood by having enormous amounts of data and then analyzing it in new ways. Some of it's already been done, that's been important in the whole genomic revolution, but I think there's so much more that can be done. You may know that MIT just announced uh, a billion dollar new college of uh, artificial intelligence at MIT in computer science. And I think that things like that you know, could just go take us so much further. And I think that will happen in many different areas in the life sciences. Well, I think that there are many ways that MIT can and already does interact with, with people in Italy. I mean, I know in our lab we've had people uh, come over, you know, for, for years, you know, do programs. I mean, some Italian people go to MIT. And, and I think that there's just different kinds of collaborations that have occurred across the board and I see no reason, in fact I see every reason why that will continue. Well Moderna is a company that I helped start and, mm -hmm. and it's gotten some publicity recently because it was the largest biotech IPO in history. Mm -hmm. uh, it just happened last December and one of the exciting things about Moderna is that it's you know, creating a whole new class of medicines, what we call messenger RNA, which mm -hmm. to me could be, and I think will be, revolutionary in terms of possibly creating new vaccines, creating, creating new treatments for heart disease, rare diseases, even possibly someday personalized vaccines for cancer treatment. But like our lab over the last 35 years, I mean, we've helped launch a number of companies. I mean, Moderna, you know, is one I'm very proud of, but I'm proud of all of them. What, what, what I feel is like what I try to do is I just, you know, uh, to me, like training students and postdocs, you know, to be the next general leaders, next generation of leaders, that's what I love doing. You know, some of it's science, I, some of it's, some of it could be innovation, some of it could be business. It really depends on what they want to do. My hope for, for the people who work in our lab is that they find their passion, that they follow their passion, and whatever I can do to help, that's what I want to do. Yeah, well, I think that that the Bayh-Dole Act, you know, I think it was maybe, I can't remember exactly the year, but, but that I think certainly was very helpful in terms of accelerating, um, you know, inventions out of universities, you know, to, to help companies get started and therefore greatly improve the public good. I think any time capital gains taxes are are, you know, are lowered compared to regular taxes, that also, I think, provides, you know, real incentives. Anytime there's more basic funding for uh, research, um, that also, I think, helps, you know, uh, you know, companies and innovation get started. So I think there are a variety of things that, 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 that have, have made a contribution.
Well, I, I may be prejudiced, but I think the number one thing that you want to do is, is create absolutely the best universities in the world. You know, when I even look at the United States, to me, the two greatest centers of innovation by far, in my opinion, are the area around Stanford University, you know, which is Silicon Valley, and the area around MIT, which has been Kendall, Kendall Square, Square and, yeah. and which has the highest concentration of biotechnology companies in the world. And to me, it's no accident that they're there rather than much larger cities like New York or Chicago or Los Angeles or Houston. You know, you, you, you make the universities great, and that's sort of the first step, you know, to, to, to making that happen. So I think actually making them great and making them also maybe have somewhat of an engineering culture. You know, I'd, I'd say MIT and Stanford are very often ranked number one and two in engineering. So you have great universities and they're particularly great at engineering. They're also great at biology and other things too. And, and I think that they've also made a priority of, of wanting to do good, you know, wanting to have impact. And, and, and so I think the number one thing I would think is make the universities in Italy absolutely the best in the world. Well, I think, I think being innovative is a wonderful thing. It's, it's going to make the world a lot better place. It'll make Italy a lot better place. It makes the United States a lot better place. You know, it's what creates our future. I also think innovation is a team effort ultimately. You know, I think it often comes from groups of people. They need leaders, but it's, it's really a team effort with people with different skills, who, you know, all pushing together to take some ideas and get them out to the world. Yeah, well, I think innovation is generally, you know, creating something that could be significant, you know, could be an invention, you know, some, something important that will, will, you know, make our future Change better. Yeah, yes. And, and that, the only difference between now and, and say, 18, 19 years ago is that, you know, certain things have been invented between now and then, and there are also certain tools that are available now that weren't available then. So there, there, there will be different things. Yeah, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm not smart enough to know what happens tomorrow, but what I'll try to do is, but, but, but what I've watched over the last 50 years is with the United States, and it's been very interesting. There's, it's, it's very cyclical. What happens is if, if, if something gets pushed too far to the left, people get upset and moves back to the center. If something gets pushed too far to the right, people get upset and that gets pushed back to the center. And that's happened with elections, that's happened with funding. And so I, I think that, that, that I've been actually very pleased overall watching the United States over many years, you know, have that sort of internal check and balance on voting. And that's, you know, and so you see sometimes it's Republicans, sometimes it's Democrats. So my feeling is if things get pushed too far in a certain direction, you know, then that will hurt the people in power. And if it gets, you know, and, if it, and, and I think that that's what's, what's happened at least as long as I've been alive. Okay, so we would like to thank Dr. Langer for his time and his precious information and thank you. Thank you. <laughs>